जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी चन पल गिरीवर धारी गोपी चन पल गिरीवर धारी यशोदनंदन प्रचन रंजन यशोदनंदन प्रचन रंजन जमुना थीरा पन जमुना थीरा पन स्पति प्राचकाचार्य अस्थोत्र सुत श्री श्रीमद 
अभय चरण अरविंद भक्ति भेदांत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की जय इस्कान फाउंडर आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय जायोम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज का चार्ष अस्थोतर सत्य श्री श्रीमान शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की जय अनंती खोति बैष्णव प्रिंद की जय नामाचार्य शिल हरि रस ठाकुर की जय प्रेम सिकोहो श्री कृष्ण छोइ धन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गिरार हर शिवासादि गौ भक्त भृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम खुंद राधा खुंद गिदि गोवर्धन की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय श्री नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय श्री जगन्नाथ पुरी धाम की जय श्री द्वारक धाम की जय श्री मथुरा धाम की जय गंगा मई की जय यमुना मई की जय भक्ति देवी की जय तुलसी देवी की जय समवेद भक्त वृंद की जय गौर प्रेमानंदी ओ ग्लोरी इज टू द असेंबली बॉडी ओ ग्लोरी इज टू द असेंबली बॉडी ओ ग्लोरी इज टू द असेंबली बॉडी ओ ग्लोरी इज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांगा भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवते वासुदेवा सोनक उवाच इत्यापि व्याहृत राज ऋषि कवि शोनक उवाच व्याहृत राज ऋषि कवि शोनक उवाच व्याहृत राज ऋषि कवि
Ladies. Abhivyahritam All that was spoken Raja The king Nishamya By hearing Bharata Rishabha Maharaj Parikshit Kim What Anyat more Prishtavan Did he inquire from him? Bhuya Again Vyasakim Unto the son of Yasdev Rishim One who was well versed Kavim Poetic. Shonaka said, The son of Yasdeva, Srila Shukadev Goswami, was a highly learned sage and was able to describe things in a poetic manner. What did Maharaj Parikshit again inquire from him after hearing all that he has said? Purport by His Divine <coughs> Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. A pure devotee of the Lord automatically develops all godly qualities. And some of the prominent features of those qualities are as follows. He is kind, peaceful, truthful, equable, faultless, magnanimous, mild, clean, non-possessive, a well-wisher to all, satisfied, surrendered to Krishna, without hankering, simple, fixed, self-controlled, a balanced eater, sane, mannerly, prideless, grave, sympathetic, friendly, poetic, expert, and silent. Out of these 26 prominent features of a devotee, as described by Krishna Das Kaviraj in his Chaitanya Charitamrita, the qualification of being poetic is especially mentioned herein in relation to Shukadev Goswami. The presentation of Srimad Bhagavatam by his recitation is the highest poetic contribution. He was a self-realized learned sage. In other words, he was a poet amongst the sages. Gyan Timidandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chakshuru Miditanjena Sri Gudave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtan Stapitam Yena Bhutale 
Swayam Rupa Katamayam Tatati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Juthapada Kamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagar Chataham Sahakana Raghunatham Vitham Tham Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadudham Parijana Sahidam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitham Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Khanda Radha Khanda Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutalai Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Vishesha Sunyavadi Astatyate Shatarine Hare Krishna I am very grateful to be back home with all of you. Shishirada Gopinath Temple Kijai. Shishirada Gopinath have been standing bestowing mercy and blessings upon an ever-expanding family since around 1987. The temple room has changed dramatically. The amount of devotees that our assembling has changed dramatically. Some of our individual bodies have changed dramatically. <laughs> but they are the same. <laughs> their, their beauty is ever increasing. That is the only thing that changes. <laughs> and their mercy is ever increasing. And we have come by Srila Prabhupada's divine grace to take shelter of their mercy. And every day in all these years, the recitation and discussion of Srimad Bhagavatam has been taking place. times where one or two people at the most were at Srimad Bhagavatam class. There were times when thousands and thousands of people were coming to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. But the service for the pleasure of the deities reciting the glories of the Lord in Srimad Bhagavatam remains always the same.
Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 3, entitled Pure Devotional Service, Text 13. Sonaka said, The son of Yasdev, Srila Shukadev Goswami, was a highly learned sage and was able to describe things in a poetic manner. What did Maharaj Parikshit again inquire from him after hearing all that he has said? Here in Sonagrishi is representing 88,000 great sages that assembled in a forest on the bank of the Gomati River. The sages of Naimasharanya, they gathered in this holy place for a similar reason that hopefully many of us have gathered today. Out of great concern for humanity, for all living beings. Krishna had recently departed from the world. And the influence of Kali Yuga was growing more and more. From their understanding of the Holy Scriptures and from their own intuition, they could feel the influence of Kali creating more and more suffering the degradation of humanity. They could feel what was happening in the world today. Although the tragedies and the sufferings that we find on our planet are heartbreaking and a devotee really wants to care and actually as we make spiritual progress we're willing to give our lives to help others it's not a surprise it's expected The influence of Kali has its ups and downs, but the general motion is getting worse and worse. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many descriptions of the various calamities, miseries, and corruptions that happen in this age. And among all of them, the characteristic of Kali that is most prominent is quarrel, quarrel and hypocrisy. Srila Prabhupada would often, on behalf of the Acharyas, describe Kali Yuga as the age of quarrel. Paramakaruna Pahundui Janani Tai Chandra. Considering the condition of life, the Supreme Personality of Godhead descends in His most magnanimous, munificent, and merciful of all incarnations, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda.
because they are giving such a inconceivable concession. Whatever we've done, whatever we haven't done in all of our previous lives, if we just accept the principle of devotional service and take shelter of the Lord by hearing his glories and chanting his names and glories, the Lord will deliver us. Material nature is very powerful. In any yuga, even in the age of religion and prosperity, still the powers of maya are beyond what a conditioned jiva can withstand. She may allure us through pleasures or through miseries. Lust, anger, envy, arrogance, greed, illusion. She has a way, according to who we are, what the environment is, to trap everybody. It does not matter how much we know, how much people think we know, what we can do, what we have. Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita, Maya Dyakshena Prakriti, that Maya material nature is under his control. And because Krishna is all powerful, Maya is all powerful. There's only one power greater than Krishna, than Krishna's Maya, and that is Krishna. So the conclusion of all knowledge, the conclusion and purpose of all tapasya, of all our spiritual practice, is to bring us to that level of consciousness where we honestly, earnestly, and humbly surrender to take shelter of Krishna. So these great sages of Naimasharanya, they understand it's the only solution. And they see how even, the na even in the name of Dharma, people become entrapped in Maya. They want to do something. They're performing yajyas. They're trying to induce auspiciousness. And ultimately, they approach Sutta Goswami. And Sonak Rishi, who is their representative, he is praising Sutta Goswami they are selecting him especially because he is a disciple of Sukadev Goswami. And in today's verse, The son of Yasdev, Srila Shukadev Goswami, was a highly learned sage and was able to describe things in a poetic manner. What did Maharaj Pariksit again inquire from him after hearing all that he had said? Sonakrishi, after this verse, is describing for everyone benefit. The mood.
mood of the setting in which the Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to be spoken. First of all, he describes the character of Parikshit Maharaj, who is hearing. He was the grandson of the Pandavas. And by the influence of his grandparents, his mother, and all the people around him, he grew up feeling the love of Krishna through everyone around. And therefore, he became naturally attracted to Krishna. It describes from his very childhood he was a great devotee. And even when he played with dolls as a little child, the dolls were Krishna. <laughs> and he was offering service. Little children like to play because it gives them pleasure. Parikshit Maharaj was endowed with such a bhakti that his play was giving pleasure to Krishna. The background is also described in Srimad Bhagavatam when he was just a little embryo in the womb of his mother, Uttara. She was a widow. Her husband, who was but a teenager, was killed in the battlefield. And Ashwatthama, the son of Dromana, sent a Brahmastra specifically to kill Parikshit. This little child in the womb was the sole surviving heir of the Pandava dynasty. He already killed the five sons of Draupadi. He was so thorough. His sense of vengeance was so strong. He's a son of Dronacharya. He was actually a very learned Brahmin. He was a teacher of the Pandavas. But he had lost his intelligence to such an extent, such envy, such anger. The most deadly of all weapons, the Brahmastra, he invoked to kill a child in the womb. The child could do nothing. Actually, who could do anything except Krishna? Even the Pandavas had no powder to counteract what was going on. It was happening so fast. It was only his mother, Uttara. She saw the Brahmastra coming, and in her helpless motherly love, she cried, cried and cried to Krishna to protect her child. She prayed to Krishna, if this Brahmastra must kill someone, let it kill me, but please protect my child. This is the atmosphere that this little baby is growing up in. Such motherly love. Krishna appeared within the womb and dispelled, counteracted, removed the Brahmastra. And Parikshit Maharaj saw Krishna come to save him. Soon after he was born, such a debt. In one sense, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the very basis of Parikshit Maharaja's um, example to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, 
And so even in the most dangerous situation where he was cursed, he was actually cursed to die in seven days. But his consciousness was not, why is this happening that I'm cursed to die in seven days? He chose to be grateful. Krishna saved me when I was helpless and alone. Why would he not save me now? And saving me doesn't mean just his physical life. He was taking shelter of Krishna his whole life. The verse that Srila Prabhupada quotes so often, Tatena Gambam Susamikshamano, spoken by Lord Brahma. There's not all that much that Brahma needs to fear. He still had a long, guaranteed life ahead of him. <laughs> and in Brahma Loka, there's no earthquakes or <laughs> heat waves. There's no climate change. It's always nice there. But still, he's praying in this way. That one who goes through even great sufferings of life, Bows, bows the head in gratitude. And taking shelter of Krishna. Liberation is that person's claim. So Parikshit Maharaj Obviously, he wasn't happy, he was cursed. He loved his family, he loved all the citizens, he felt duty-bound. But if this is Krishna's will, with a grateful heart, Krishna, I'm yours. He gave his life, he took shelter. And Sukratala, how many have been to Sukratala? Please raise your hands. That is the place it is said that Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken by Shukadeva Goswami. It's between Rishikesh and Delhi. Not too far from the main road if you drive. There's a banyan tree on the bank of Mother Ganga. Parikshit Maharaj went there. And all the sages and rishis and great Brahmins throughout the universe came there to be there for him. Such an exalted personality. The last seven days of his life, they wanted to be there for him. When Parikshit Maharaj arrived, the Srimad Bhagavatam itself gives a list of some of the people who were there. <coughs> Vyasdev was there. And his guru, Narada Muni, and Parvat Muni, and Vashishta Muni, and Vitar Vishwamitra Muni, so many great personalities were assembled. Parikshit Maharaj, with such respect, humbled himself to all of them and begged them to speak. What is the duty of a person about to die? It was at that time that Sukadev Goswami appeared. His father and guru was Vyasdev. His param guru was Narada Muni. 
Naramuni was guru for Prahlad and, and he was guru for Dhruva. He was guru for Valmiki. He was the guru's guru. <laughs> Everyone considered Sukadev Goswami to be the most qualified. At the time, he was 16 years old. So we begin the sages of Naimasharanya are describing how. Parikshit had such a qualification to be the person to hear the greatest narration that has ever been. Srimad Bhagavatam is the, is the graduate study of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna himself speaks it. Within the Srimad Bhagavatam, spoken by Sukadev Goswami is the Uddhava Gita. Krishna's instructions to his dear most friend Uddhava. And what to speak more than any other of the literatures compiled by Vyasadeva, the wonderful pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan are described. In this chapter, in the following verses, after glorifying Sukadev Goswami, they are emphasizing the need of Krishna consciousness and the state of mind in which we value this message. Ayur harati vai pong sang udyan astam chayang aso taskyal te yakshano nitta uddama sloka varadaya. Both by rising and setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. The sunrise is such a beautiful time. And the sunset is a beautiful time. These two sandhyas have been glorified by a poets and artists since the beginning of time. But the reality, what we don't see with our eyes, but what's actually happening, it was with every magnificent sunrise and beautiful sunset, everyone is one day closer to death. Padam padam yadvi padam natesham. And actually we don't know when that day is going to be. If we are meant to live a hundred years or forty years or five years Whatever that may be, every day we're coming closer. Except one who utilizes one time, one's time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. For such a person with every rising and setting of the sun, we are one day closer to eternal life. Thank <laughs> you. 
when it comes to real destiny, these are the two cha choices we really have. Do we want to live our day moving toward death? Or do we want to live our day living toward eternal life? That is not a choice that is determined by circumstances. That is a choice that is determined by our own will. How do we want to utilize our time? And then in the next verses, graphic examples of what a waste it is having this valuable human life, durlabhamana vajanma, lobhya samsare, and not receiving the gift that comes with it, the gift of self-realization. It is described, do not, do the trees not live? Some trees are very old. There are trees that are hundreds of years old. And there's actually trees that are thousands of years old. The same spirit soul, the same jiva is in that tree. And they're very big and high. You know, sometimes when we visit some of these trees, we think, what this tree has been, has been around during the Roman Empire, during the age of the Aryans in India, or whatever you may call it, the historians. Thousands of years. <laughs> so when we think the value of life, the greatness of life is living or living long. Here are the sages of Naima Sharanya. Represented by Shonaka. Do not the trees live? Do not the bellows of the blacksmith breathe? All around us, do not the animals and the beasts and the insects discharge semen? So is the value of life, you know, increasing our family, increasing our dynasty, breathing, living, Men who are like dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. Praise those men who never listen to the transcendental pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna, the deliverer from evils. This verse is, each one of these verses is so vital for us to keep the compass of our aspirations and the purpose of life. Because we are so easily distracted. And what fundamental examples are being given here. Living long life without bhakti. It's a tree's life. It's really no better. Living we breathe like a bellows. <coughs> and here, how many people are influenced by the greatness of people with material accomplishments? They may be learned scholars. They may be physically very strong and Great athletes, 
They may have lots and lots of money. They may, for the time being, be very handsome or beautiful. They may have so many accomplishments that are actually praised throughout history. And we look up to those people. Now, for a devotee, Srila Prabhupada describes, when we see somebody achieving much, a devotee sees that actually it's by the blessings of Krishna they're allowed to do this. So we honor that they are getting a blessing of Krishna. But as far as honoring the purpose in which they're living, this graphic example. <laughs> Men who are like dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. Dogs, <laughs> hogs, <laughs> camels, and Asses. Praise those men who never listen to the transcendental pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna, the deliverers from evils. Now, the fact that they're being praised means they're very, very accomplished people. And why is it so graphically described? As a, as a warning. Because these are distractions. At Shukratala, the greatest sages in the world, they were honoring Sukadev because of his humility and his devotion to Krishna, because of his love of God. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He glorified in ultimate ways even people like Sukhamla Brahmachari who were totally unknown and had nothing. Kalavecha Sridhar, Vasudeva, who was actually a total outcast with leprosy. He was seeing the glory in their devotion. And actually, that's, any, that's something, whatever our karma may be, we can surrender to Krishna. We can choose to live with the character and the qualities of a Vaishnava. And it really doesn't world matter what the world thinks. What really matters is what does Krishna think? What does the true gurus think? What do, the, what do the Vaishnavas appreciate in us? And then he goes on because we know how much people are attracted to entertainment, whatever the form it may be. That one who does not listen to the pastimes and the words and messages of the personality of Godhead, who hasn't heard and chanted in this way, their ears are no better than the holes in the ground where snakes live. And their t tongues have no more value than the tongue of a frog. Now this is quite insulting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you went to an important person and said, your, your, <laughs> your ears are snake holes and you have, you have a tongue like a frog. <laughs> 
and only asses praise you. <laughs> but actually, these are not insults. These are instructions. <laughs> And the graphic detail, which is actually at the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, how much we are meant to value and treasure the process of devotional service. Now, how in truth, nothing else really has any value. And Srila Prabhupada, in this wonderful purport, he describes, you know, we like to hear, but if the hears, if our ears are just hearing these mundane subjects and we're taking enjoyment in that, then it's like a hole in the ground, and who comes to take shelter? The snake of, the snake of death. Snakes represent death. How many people like poison snakes to come into their house? But yet if we take this seriously, we're inviting the most poisonous snake of inevitable death into our ears. And we're enjoying it because we don't understand what's really happening. And we, when we speak criticism of others, for those of you who live in the countryside, you know that one of snakes' favorite food is frogs. And especially at night, they come out to eat frogs. And at night, it's hard to see the frogs. But the frogs, when they, what is the sound they make? <laughs> you sound like you've been practicing a lot. Everybody practices these. But the frog is thinking, I am singing beautiful songs. <laughs> really, and other frogs, when they hear frogs going, whatever, the, the croaking, the, 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 the frogs are thinking, oh, such beautiful poetry, <laughs> such wonderful melody. So among the frogs themselves, they can be very proud of how, how loud their volume is, how sweet their intonations are. But actually, the snake, the snake of death, you know, he's, he's on the ground, he can't see the frog. But when he hears the croaking of the frog, he knows exactly where the frog is. So the frog's poetry, and even the frogs, you know, trying to invite the opposite sex to come and enjoy with them, that's all going on. But actually, he's just calling, death, please come and eat me. The snake of death. So this is quite extreme. But it's reality. All the gossip, all the mundane topics, every vibration is just crawling death closer. Sometimes people like to ornament themselves. They feel beautiful. Other people think they're beautiful. Other people think they're successful. It may be a crown maybe a fantastic turban, but here it's describing 
The upper portion of the body, though crowned with a silk turban, is only a heavy burden, if not bowed down before the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who can award liberation. Srila Prabhupada describes, if you're drowning in the ocean and you have a wonderful king's crown, and usually the, the heavier the crown, the more valuable it is. If it has diamonds and rubies and sapphires and emeralds and gold and silvers and all these wonderful, wonderful jewels, In the middle of the ocean, it just makes you sink. <laughs> what is the value of it? Somebody else drowning in the ocean may think, oh, you are so fortunate. I want, I want a crown just like yours. <laughs> but actually, it's just pushing you down to suffering and death. And the hands, even though they're decorated with glittering bangles, are like those of a dead man if they're not engaged in the service of the Lord. And the eyes, the eyes that do not have the darshan of Shishirada Gopinath, the eyes that don't actually see the Supreme Personality of Godhead or see the world in relation to the Lord. The eyes that are not looking for the opportunity to serve and love God are compared to the printed plumes on a peacock. Peacocks are very beautiful, but they don't see. They look like eyes, but they don't see. So in other words, if we're not using our vision for the, in harmony with the purpose of our very souls, it may be very sensational and wonderful, but it's useless. And the legs, that do not move to holy places where the Lord is remembered are considered to be like tree trunks. Where do tree trunks go? Tree trunks stay in the same place. You know, the roots are maybe growing and everything, but the tree trunk is in one place. So the idea is, even though we're moving all over the place, we're actually going nowhere. The person who has not at any time received the dust of the feet of the Lord's pure devotee upon his head is certainly a dead body. And the person who has never experienced the aroma of the Tulsi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord is also a dead body, although breathing. Can a dead body breathe? Dwarkadish rule. Madhavananda rule. You can give us medical um, authority. Can a dead body breathe? Well, contrary to your opinion, this is practically saying every where almost every living being in the world who's breathing is a dead body. Again, very, very graphic warning. 
what is actually valuable in my life. This is what's being emphasized here. And I'll, I will end with this one, the next verse. Certainly that heart is steel framed, which in spite of one's chanting the holy name of the Lord with concentration does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes, and the hair stand on end. Now, the heart is a very soft organ. Very, very soft organ. But here it's being described as steel framed. The heart is compared to steel. If when we're chanting the holy names with concentration, we're not feeling Krishna's love and going into an ecstatic happiness. This is quite humbling. Please raise your hand if you feel that you have a steel-framed heart. It's to humble us and to give us an understanding of what really is the value of life. So this is the mood in which Parikshit Maharaj is hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And it is with this value and understanding of life itself, Sukadev Goswami. He's not just speaking poetry. He's giving the ultimate medicine. He's giving the ultimate blessing for everyone. Sukadev Goswami, in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam and other Vedic literatures, there are descriptions of why the great sages considered him to be the most exemplary person to speak this Paramhamsa Samhita, the crest jewel of all Vedic literature. When Vyasadeva was sitting on the bank of Saraswati River in Badrigashram, after compiling so many Vedic literatures, he was feeling he was feeling an emptiness in his heart, and he could not understand why. And it was that time Narada Muni appeared to him. Narada Muni is a son and disciple of Lord Brahma, the original guru of the universe. Narada Muni was given transcendental knowledge, and empowered and initiated at the very beginning of creation. And he comes to Vyasadev and tells him that you have described so many religious principles, so many ideas of dharma, but you have not given a literature that is exclusively describing pure unalloyed devotional service and the loving pastimes of Krishna the original personality of Godhead. 
on this instruction, he wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we know the wonderful story how Vyasadeva asked Narada Muni, how did you receive this knowledge? And he told his previous life and actually a previous kalpa. He was a simple maid servant son. But he loved to serve great souls. His qualification was by his mother's goodness. He was allowed to associate with great devotees. And how did he get the attraction, the actual attraction, not just like an entertainment attraction? the actual attraction to hear. By his service. He was assisting his mother. He was doing very, very simple service. Seva. It was that service that pleased the sages. And he was so humble in his service that very respectfully he, he would ask permission to take their maha maha prasad. How much he valued that. He wasn't thinking, I'm great. Just a little boy. Serving. And they gave heartfelt blessings to him. And because of that, he actually, Krishna in his heart, awakened within him a very profound taste to hear his glories. The sages left. His mother was bit by a serpent and died, and he was a little boy. It's not that it was, he obviously loved his mother, but by the blessings of the sages, he understood whatever's happening in this world is an opportunity to seek Krishna. And he did. And he spent many years just wandering from place to place to develop a deeper connection with Krishna. And Krishna appeared to him and then disappeared and told him, in your next life, you will be my great devotee. That is the value of devotional service. It's not something cheap. This is what's established in Srimad Bhagavatam. So Narada Muni, he took his next birth as the son of Brahma. He received the most divine instructions that Brahma received from Krishna. And now he's living. Narada Muni doesn't get old. such a wonderful musician. He's playing his veena and just chanting the glories of the Lord wherever he goes. <coughs> Narada instructed Vyas. And here is Vyas Dev. According to Some of our acharyas. Sukadev in the spiritual world of Goloka is Sukha, who is an intimate associate of Srimati Radharani, who is in the form of her pet parrot. 
And he descended from Goloka into this world when Radha and Krishna came to this world. There is an explanation one day Srimati Radharani was having Sukha, the parrot, sitting on her finger. And she was personally with her own hands feeding him pomegranate seeds. And the parrot was eating the pomegranate seeds. And the nature of parrots, certain types of parrots, they like to repeat. So Radharani was saying, please chant Krishna's names. Krishna, 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 Krishna. And the parrot was chanting Krishna, 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 but not like the parrots in this world where they just repeat. He was sitting on Srimati Radharani's finger. He was chanting Krishna's name, repeating her for her pleasure. Sometimes we use the analogy, we take water from Ganga and with love and devotion we offer it back to Mother Ganga. And in a similar way, whatever we learn, the value of what we're learning is the recognition that this is a gift coming from Krishna through the gurus, through the Vaishnavas. And what is the purpose of it? To offer back for their pleasure. I'm hearing only so that I can serve and give pleasure. And in many ways, every aspect of life, I'm given movement in my fingers. I'm given the ability to see with my eyes, hear with my ears. And the value of it is how I can please that person who's given it to me and who's only pleased with love and devotion. Patram pushpam palam So whatever we receive, its perfection is when we offer it back to who we receive it from. First of all, we have to recognize when we're offering water to the Ganga, it's supposed to be an act of humility. It's not just a ritual. Mother Ganga, you have so much water. And my value is I have enough to fit in my hands. But if I offer this back to you, you will be pleased with me. That's actually the story of life itself for a devotee. Whatever we little we have on any level, it's all just a spark of Krishna's splendor. But yet it has infinite value when it's offered, when the recognition, this is yours, Krishna, and it's offered for Krishna's pleasure. It's the only success from a spiritual perspective. So, Sukha the parrot is hearing Krishna's name from Radharani and he's repeating that name for the pleasure of Radharani. That's the spiritual world. And then he flies away. And he goes to Nandagram where Krishna is. And he's chanting Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And Krishna's listening. He's with his friends. Where is that coming from? Who's saying that? And because he heard from Srimati Radharani, Sukha sounds just like Radharani. And Krishna sees the little parrot and calls the parrot, and the parrot comes on his finger 
And he's saying, please say again. And in this way, who is Sukadev Goswami? He's what gives pleasure to Sri Radha is what pleases Krishna. So his service to Srimati Radharani is pleasing Sri Radharani by pleasing Krishna. And when it came time for them to dis after Krishna delivered um, Dantavakra in Mathura, Krishna left Brindavan and went to live in Mathura and Dwarka. And then he came back to Brindavan, especially to conclude his manifested pastimes. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur and Aracharyas, Jiva Goswami, they describe how Krishna returned to Brindavan and what a wonderful festival it was. All the residents of Brindavan, after practically a hundred years of separation from Krishna. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught us, in separation from Krishna, the residents of Brindavan are considering a moment to be 12 years or more. That little moment when your eyes blink and you don't know it's blinking, the amount of time that the upper eyelid touches the lower eyelid is a moment, Namesh. For the residents of Vrindavan, their love and separation was so deep. It's a yuga or by our calculation of understanding, 12 years. How many moments in a day? How many moments in a year? This was their experience. And now Krishna has returned. There's a great reunion celebration. And Krishna performs most loving, intimate pastimes with the residents of Vrindavan. But then he can't leave again. It was actually the time for him to conclude his pastimes in this world. At that time, two things happened simultaneously. One is, he brought residents of Vrindavan back to Goloka, the spiritual world. And he also, his pastimes in this world and his abode in this world became unmanifest. And he continued his Nitya Lila, his eternal pastimes, on the Aprakrita and the unmanifested. When we go to Vrindavan, the great Acharyas, they tell Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena that actually all the pastimes are eternally taking place here in the Vrindavan, in this world, on the spiritual level that cannot be accessed through our material senses. But through feelings of separation, we can feel them. By hearing, we can actually experience them. And if it's Krishna's wish, he can give us the eyes to see them. So all of his pastimes were becoming unmanifested. He's taking to Goloka and making everything up. on the aprakata, the, the the materially invisible form. But Sri Radha and Krishna, they told 
sukha to stay, to remain there. Because he had heard, he had seen, he experienced the pastimes of the Lord. So he remained. And after Krishna and his pastimes disappeared from the material vision of this world, Sukadev, he was just eager to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Lord Shiva Mahadev, at Mansarovar during Krishna's Leela, he performed tapasya so that he can serve in the role of a gopi. And he was given the service of Gopeshwar Mahadev. It's one of the great Mahajans, the greatest Vaishnav, a protector of the Dham of Brindaban. He was speaking the glories of Krishna's pastimes to Parvati. And Sukadev was listening secretly. No one was supposed to be there. And when Lord Shiva saw, took notice of him, he was thinking, these are very confidential subjects. They are not to be heard or spoken by unqualified people. And this bird is listening to me. So he went to catch Sukadev, and Sukadev flew away. He went to Padrigashram. And meanwhile, Vyasadev is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam to his good wife, Vitika. And Sukadev enters through her mouth into her womb. And Shiva wanted him to come out. But Vyasadev said, why do you want him to come out? He was listening to your, to your recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam. What's the result of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam? And Shiva was extolling its glories. So Vyasadev convinced, let him, let him be with us. Aracharyas describe in the Srimad Bhagavatam itself that he was a liberated soul. He took the role of one with, with no material desires whatsoever. He had this Brahma Gyan, I'm not this body and this whole world is illusion. And he understood the power of Maya. So he refused to come out of the womb. He would rather sit in the womb of a mother his whole life than come out into this world with the risk of being distracted. What an example this is. How much we're eager for these distractions. <coughs> but Sukadev is Atmarama. He's self-satisfied. Now it's not that the womb was growing. <laughs> but he was growing. He remained in his mother's womb for 12 years. Now, for those of you who are mothers, <laughs> um, we may pray for a child like Sukadev Goswami, <laughs> but if there's a price. <laughs> and Vyasadev, he wants his child to be born. 
So he's actually preach, he's preaching Srimad Bhagavatam, he's preaching for his child to come out of the womb. And Sukadev, you know, he's actually a fully developed person. It's not like he's just a big baby. You know, he was a totally intellectual, grown, 12-year-old boy. But he wouldn't come out. So Vyasadeva is trying to convince him to come out. And Sukadeva is from within the womb. He's, I'm not coming out because Maya is. <laughs> Maya is very strong. Srila Prabhupada would say that the problem with you devotees is you are not enough afraid of Maya. Now that doesn't mean we should live in fear. It means we should live in caution, taking shelter of Krishna. So Sukadev, he's a liberated person, but he's afraid of Maya. <laughs> I'm not going to come out. There's so many people trying to enjoy in this world, I might get affected by them. So finally, Vyasadev, he said, if I, how can I get you to come out? Sukadev understood, Krishna is the controller of Maya. If Krishna promises to protect me from Maya, then he has to come and, I, and assure me. So Vyasadev called for Krishna. That time he was in Dwarka. Krishna came all the way to Vyasadev's home and Krishna promised Sukadev that I will withdraw Maya from your life. Maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sarsarat. Maya is under Krishna's control. This was the very unique way in which Sukadev Goswami was taking shelter of Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes we think taking shelter of Krishna is a really a fun thing, and it actually is for the soul. But he was taking shelter of Krishna, remaining within the womb of mother for 12 years. But when he understood he was under Krishna's protection, he came out. There was no some scars or anything like that. He just came out and walked away. <laughs> That's the only information that I've seen. He just comes out of the womb and walks away. <laughs> and doesn't say a word to anyone. His father's is right behind him, calling for him to come home. And Sukadev, you know, he, he never walked before. He was just in a womb for 12 years, but he was, it appears he walked really fast. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care about home. He didn't care about anything. He just was walking. And Vyasadev was running behind him, calling out, son, son, come home. And all he could, all Vyasadev, the only answer he got were the echoes from the trees. Sukadev did not say a word, he just left. And the description is given that there was young girls bathing with no clothes on in a lake. And Sukadev, he comes out, he's a young boy. He doesn't have any clothes on. Because, you know, he just came out of the womb. <laughs> and he left immediately. You know, his mother I, he doesn't say anything like this, but she was, please, you know, I have nice clothes for you. He was, he didn't, he didn't, Consider that even at a body, or to speak of clothes. 
He was not seeing anything material. So these girls were playing in the water and they just continued playing. They saw him and it was like seeing nobody. And then Vyastev, who's like their grandfather, he's running behind and as soon as they see Vyastev, they become all disturbed and start coming out of the water and offering respect and putting on their clothes and Vyastev said, why are you, I'm like your grandfather, why were you not embarrassed when my son came before you? And they revealed what the truth was. Because your son doesn't, doesn't see anything material. He's not thinking he's his body. He's not thinking we're our bodies. He makes no distinction between male or female or good or bad or high or low. He's just seeing Brahman everywhere. Now, you may be the greatest of all sages, but still, you're seeing a difference. This was the power of Sukadev Goswami. Now, Vyastev, he's the literary incarnation of Krishna. He has compiled all the Vedic literatures for our benefit. He already knows everything. But for the pleasure of Krishna, he knows there's no greater pleasure than to show compassion by giving <coughs> spiritual direction to others. <coughs> and the culmination of everything he learned was from Narada Muni. He compiled the Srimad Bhagavatam. He recognized that there was no one more qualified than his son Sukadev to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam. And Vyasadeva is Trikalagya, he sees into the future. He knows past, present, and future. He knows the importance of a person Bhagavatam to speak the book Bhagavatam. And no one could be more qualified than him. But how can I teach him if he won't come home? So Sukadeva remained in the forest completely aloof. Vyastava, he sent his students when they, go, when they would go out to collect wood into the forest, he gave them slokas from the Srimad Bhagavatam to recite. Knowing that if, if Sukadev Goswami hears these verses, he's going to get such a higher taste than the liberated platform of Mukti or Brahman, and he's going to want to hear more. They were reciting verses describing how much Krishna loves his devotees. A beautiful verse describing how Krishna becomes the chariot driver of his own devotee, Arjuna. A beautiful verse from the 10th canto where um, Krishna's coming in with the cowherd boys from the pastures. And his, his beauty and his qualities are being described by the gopis. His wonderful bluish complexion. He's wearing a wonderful peacock feather in his turban. There's blue flowers draping over his ears. A forest garland is around his neck, reaching down to his knees. His, clo his, his cloth is bright and golden like lightning. And he's playing his flute and being praised by all of his friends. 
describe Krishna's love for his devotees, Krishna's all attractive, charming form, and Krishna's mercy. That wonderful verse spoken by Uddhava. Who else can I take shelter of than Krishna? Putana. Putana was the personification of evil and deception. She came in the role of a mother to poison and murder Krishna. But yet Krishna gave her the liberation of his own mother in the spiritual world. Who else to take shelter than Krishna? So when Sukadev heard these beautiful verses that Vyasadeva had them reciting as they're collecting wood, he came back to Vyasadeva's ashram to learn the Srimad Bhagavatam from him. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he declares, this is the glory of bhakti. Even the most liberated souls who are completely aloof from all material attractions. <coughs> the four Kumaras. They were totally renounced. They had perfected Brahmagyan, Mukti. But yet, when they smelt the aroma of the Tulsi leaves on Lord Narayan's lotus feet, Bhakti, Prema, love awakened in their hearts. And Sukadev Goswami, by hearing Krishna's glories, Param Drisvani Vartate, the desire to, for loving service awaken in their hearts. And this is very much when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was discussing with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya that beyond liberation in the impersonal existence of the Lord is eternal loving service to the personality of Godhead. And he described in so many different ways the Atmarama verse, that even the liberated souls who have no material attractions, when they taste the sweetness of devotional service bhakti, they become attracted to be the eternal servants of the Lord. When Srila Prabhupada was asked, what, do you, what is the goal of chanting Hare Krishna? At one time he said, the goal of chanting Hare Krishna is to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> because in bhakti, the goal and the means to achieve the goal are the same. The goal is to serve and love Krishna. And the means of achieving that goal is to serve and love Krishna. Golokera prema dana harinam sankirtana. The eternal pastime of the spiritual world is sankirtan. Devotees are constantly hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in whatever they do. But they're not just hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord because that's what they're supposed to do. They're hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord. And that is where seva is the integral, all-important element. There are nine processes of devotional service. Chanting is a way of serving with love, hearing, remembering, offering puja, 
these nine processes are ways of serving with love and the goal is to continue doing those things with actual love. So Sukadev Goswami, he remained with his father to study the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he went back out into the forest and he was completely transcendental to any of the dualities of material existence. And he actually just didn't care what people thought about him. He was an avaduta. We can't imitate. People thought he was crazy. Srimad Bhagavatam describes just common people when they would see him, they thought he was like a madman. Some abused him, some were mocking him, joking about him, harassing him. He just didn't care. He was absorbed in remembering Krishna hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord within his heart. And these, these foolish people are ridiculing him. And he enters the area of Sukhartala, where all the greatest sages are gathered together on the bank of Ganga. And Parikshit Maharaj Every moment is so precious to him because he knows for sure in seven days he will be dead. Vyasadeva could have instructed Parikshit. Narada Muni. But they didn't. <coughs> Everyone was waiting for Sukadev to come. Now he's 16 years old. His Param Guru, his Guru, and all the greatest Acharyas of the universe. He honors them and they honor him. The special quality of Sukadev Goswami that made him all attractive to everyone is he loved Krishna with absolutely not a trace of false, false ego, ahankar. And he learned from his guru perfectly. Today's verse, <coughs> Sonakrishi is praising Sukadev Goswami. The son of Yasdev, Srila Sukadev Goswami, was a highly learned sage. <coughs> and was able to describe things in a poetic manner. What did Maharaj Parikshit in, again inquire from him after hearing all that he had said? When Krishna appeared within this world in his most merciful incarnation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He personified among all of his devotees the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declared Srimad Bhagavatam Amalam Puranam. It's the spotless Purana.
in just a couple of weeks we will be going to Jagannath Puri. Some of us. At the Tota Gopinath Temple, every day, Lord Chaitanya would spend hours there among his lifelong friend and devotee, Gadadhar Pandit, reciting and discussing Srimad Bhagavatam. And as they would recite, it was such nectar. Lord Chaitanya, any story he would hear, he would want to hear it over and over again. Vrindavan Das Thakur tells the story of Dhruva, the story of Prahlad, they are many chapters. Instead of just rushing to the 10th canto, Lord Chaitanya, he would listen to the story of Prahlad and Dhruva 100 times, again and again, before going on to the next story. This was the sweetness of his experience. And when our beloved Guru Maharaj Srila Prabhupada 101 years ago, when he was instructed to take the teachings of Lord Chaitanya to the whole world in the English language. And then in 1936, just about Srila Prabhupada said a fortnight, just about two weeks before his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, departed from this world. He wrote a letter from Jagannath Puri. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura was at the Chattak Parvat, near the seaside in Jagannath Puri. Srila Prabhupada was in Mumbai. There's such a good connection between Mumbai and Puri. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada was in Mumbai and he wrote a letter to, Shri, to, to his Guru Maharaj and said, you have so many disciples who are sannyasis and brahmacharis who are doing so much service for you. I'm a family person with so many responsibilities. How can I best serve you? And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he wrote. He wrote the reply with the same exact instruction he gave them at their first meeting. Bring the message of Lord Chaitanya in the English language to the whole world. This will be good for you, and it will be good for everyone. And Srila Prabhupada said, just about two weeks after this letter, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur disappeared from this world. So it was the first instruction and last instruction. And Srila Prabhupada's way of preparing to do this, he lived in Brindaban, first at Bamsi Gopal Temple, later at the Radha Dambodar Temple, the place of Jiva Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami. And he was translating and writing purports to Srimad Bhagavatam. Took several years. In those days, this is the very early 1960s, he had he had no money, he had no help. It's the 
little lantern and spend his days studying the Acharya's commentaries and writing. He would have to take trains from Mathura to Delhi. He would have to convince people to, to get paper. In those days, paper was very hard to get. There was all kinds of restrictions and policies about paper. He was begging, begging from people with influence to help him get paper. <laughs> to make friends with publishers so that they would publish it. And after several years and so much effort, the first canto was published. And the introduction is the life of Lord Chaitanya. Why? Because Lord Chaitanya came to this world to teach us how to live the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada was in Cochin, in the Kerala state. The Jaladuta came there from Calcutta and had docked there for several days. And that's where Srila Prabhupada in 1965 celebrated John Mastami, his own Bias Puja. His 69th birthday was on a boat, the Jaladuta alone. And it was there then that the boxes with the Srimad Bhagavatams were brought and were carried on to the Jala Dutta. They brought them overseas. Today's verse is describing Shukadev Goswami As a poet. And it's interesting because here in Bombay, when Srila Prabhupada wrote a Vyas Puja offering for his guru, it was a beautiful poem. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appreciated it so much. that he would, he would have him read a Bhai Charana, Charanadavinda's poem to others. And Srila Prabhupada said, all of his god-brothers at that time, they named him Kavi, poet. <laughs> he reasons ill, no, I'm sorry, um, absolute essentient, thou hast proved impersonal calamity thou hast removed. That's, that's the example of Sukadev Goswami. Why Krishna chose Sukadev of everybody to speak Srimad Bhagavatam? Because he's the very, very personification of the evidence that there's no higher realm of realization of the absolute truth than loving service to the Supreme Personality of God. And the second canto, Srila Prabhupada was so eager for us to read it. We know he brought the first canto in boxes from India. And actually, um, here in Bombay, he had agents put them, putting them in bookstores. 
There's letters of Shiva Prabhupada from America where he's writing to people in Bombay asking for reports how many Srimad Bhagavatams have been sold in the books. And one letter came back and said, actually, nobody's buying them, so we took them back from the bookstores. <laughs> so at every step, there was challenges, and he never gave up. But because there was not much funds, every chapter from the second canto that Srila Prabhupada would translate and make purports, he would make a small book, a paperback book out of that chapter. And actually, I remember Yadupa Prabhu knows all these stories better than anybody because he was there with Srila Prabhupada at his side. But in those early days, um, we were so eager for the next chapter to come out. And Bhagavatam is the answer. We, the Lord in the heart. One chapter at a time came in s small books. Until actually the entire second canto was complete. We couldn't wait for it to be published. And Srila Prabhupada couldn't wait to publish it. He would release one chapter at a time. <coughs> And how eager for us to get that chapter, that next chapter. The whole movement was holding breath, waiting for that next chapter to come out. And now all of you, you have... <laughs> Bhadra Purnima, we're distributing the entire set. You have sitting on your bookshelves, all 12 cantos, what to speak of, how many chapters. <laughs> But we shouldn't take it for granted. We should be more and more and more enthusiastic to read the Srimad Bhagavatam and discuss the Srimad Bhagavatam and come to Radha Gopinath Temple to Srimad Bhagavatam class. Thank you very much. After my long, boring class, you're all, <laughs> you have to do all this just to wake each other up. <laughs> we are so honored to have our very esteemed, exalted God brother Yadu Bara Prabhu here. <laughs> Actually, Srila Prabhupada personally empowered him to reveal the Srimad Bhagavatam through the medium of films, cinema. And there, I used to hear so many wonderful stories. Whenever he would come out with a new film, he would play it and he, with all the leaders of our movement and Srila Prabhupada sitting and Srila Prabhupada would watch it. Such encouragement. His biographies of Srila Prabhupada's life, 
documentaries on Vrindavan, New Vrindavan, so many philosophical um, shows that he created. And we're very grateful that you are here, Yadavar, for such a wonderful personal example of, of true, sincere devotional service in every way. Such a wonderful family. Would you like to speak some things for us? Let us very enthusiastically welcome Yadu Barfu Thank you, Maharaj, so much. Would you like to sit here? No, it's all right. It's a lot of, a lot of space. What can I say after that talk? <laughs> I hear you're all going to Jagannath Puri. I wish I could join you. <laughs> but we had uh, some wonderful times in, in uh, Jagannath Puri with Radhanath Swami. This was 1994. At that time he was on uh, Yatra, and I think 40 or 50 Devotees. Right, Maharaj? Forty or fifty? <laughs> Something like that. <clears throat> and we met each other at the um, Siddha Bakul, the place of Haridas Thakur. And I didn't know he was coming, he didn't know I was there, I believe. So we invited him, we were at the time living in Jagannath Puri, and our second daughter Hari Priya Devi, was about to be born, but she was overdue. We're talking about overdue children. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked, my <laughs> I asked Maharaj to come uh, Friday night to lead a kirtan, so she would be attracted to come out. <laughs> and she was born the next day. So attractive. <laughs> the kirtan. Sw Swamis have various ways of keeping busy. <laughs> but I asked Maharaj at that time, oh actually Maharaj asked me, what is the name? And I said, Haridas. So I didn't think it would have a, a uh, daughter. So uh, Maharaj asked me, so what is, what is this, a girl? And I said, what? we have no name. And immediately said, Hari Priya. <laughs> Thank, you so much, Mar Thank you so much, Maharaj, for that wonderful time. <laughs> but I, I did uh, just one thing mention last time I was here. Maharaj mentioned the Hare Krishna movie, The, the Life of Prabhupada. So we have that now in all eight major Indian languages, dubbed. And our, <clears throat> our mission is to try to make Prabhupada more well known as the great saint who took Krishna consciousness all over the world, India's greatest spiritual ambassador. So we're very hopeful that and the film can be seen many, many times in many different cities. And uh, I was speaking with Bhima Prabhu the other day, and he's very enlivened to have a traveling party with a bus and very professional audio-visual equipment, and have a program, you know, uh, kirtan, discourse, and then the film. So in this way, even down to the villagers, people can know the glories of Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Let us have kirtan.
Pristaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itina
Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari
Hadi Krishna, Hadi Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hadi Hadi Dama, Hadi Dama, Dama Dama, Hadi Hadi. Hadi Krishna, Hadi Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hadi Hadi Dama, Hadi Dama. Oh, 
Hadi Krishna Hadi Krishna 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 Hadi 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 Rama Hadi Rama 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 Hadi 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 Krishna Hadi Krishna 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 Hadi 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 Rama Hadi Rama 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 Hadi 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 Krishna Hadi Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hadi Krishna Hadi Krishna 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 Hadi 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 Rama Hadi Rama 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 Hadi 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 Krishna Hadi Krishna 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 Hadi 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 Rama Hadi Rama 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 Hadi Hadi Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama
राम राम हरि हरि
Thank you very much. Thank you. 